Hi there, and welcome to this soldering tutorial for the Quinn LED Quad. If you don't know what a Quinn LED Quad is, it's a Wi-Fi controllable 4-channel LED dimmer that you can build yourself. If you'd like to know more about this module, check out the website quinled.info, where you can learn everything you'd like to know. Okay, let's solder a module together. Links to all the components you need are on the website I previously mentioned, quinled.info. To start off, we're going to solder the smaller SMD components. Although these are SMD components, we're not going to use a hot air gun in this tutorial. Everything in this tutorial can be soldered using a normal soldering iron. Since filming this video, the board has had another revision. So the resistors and the capacitor are on the top of the board and the diode is now on the bottom of the board. Starting with the diode, we have our only component which has a polarity. So you need to make sure that you're putting it on the right way. I'll show an overlay on the screen which way that should be. Next up are the four resistors and a capacitor. We're going to use the same technique here, and that is tinning one of the pads first, then taking your component and the soldering iron, melting the pad you just tinned, pushing the component in there, and then letting go. Then you can solder the other pad and your component is soldered. On my version, there is no capacitor on the board yet, so I can't show you that, but it should be obvious on the board where it should go. Next up, we're going to solder the SMD pin headers. Again, start by tinning one of the pads, push the component into it, and then you can solder all the other pads. Next up is the voltage converter. To solder that to the board, we're first going to insert some pin headers. And then put the voltage converter on top of it. Solder that to the pin headers. Check again if we had the orientation correct, and then solder all the pins to the board on the back side also. Once that is done, we're going to put on the headers we need for the ESP32 module, and we're also going to solder the pins to the ESP32 module itself. Because of space constraints, 
I had to make some changes to the pins you're going to solder to the ESP module itself. So we're going to use two standoffs of 12 pins and two standoffs of three pins. And we need to match that with the pins we solder to the ESP32 module, like I do in the video. At first, this sandwich might seem a bit unstable. But once you solder four points on the top, it gains a bit of rigidity. Then, solder all the points on the top and the bottom, and it becomes one sturdy sandwich, which stays very compact. Once all that is done, turn the module over to its back and we're going to solder the SMD MOSFETs. I had to make it SMDs in this version because of space constraints again, but these are easily solderable by hand. First, start with thinning one of the pads again, and once that's done, take a tweezer and your soldering iron and stick it to that pad. Once you have all the four MOSFETs done, it's simply a case of soldering all the other legs. The last step of soldering these SMD MOSFETs is soldering the bigger tab on the other end. When orienting the MOSFETs on the board, make sure you have enough space left to do that. Then it's time for the screw terminals. There's a two pin screw terminal at the front of the module for your power supply. And then there's another two pin terminal at the back of the module for the positive LED rail. And last off, there's a four pin screw terminal at the back of the module, which has all the individual LED channels on the negative side. Some of the pins for these screw terminals are connected directly to the positive and negative planes. That means it has a lot of copper connected to it, and you really need to sink some heat in there to create a good bond. Last component to solder is our little temperature sensor. Push it through from the front of the board as it's laid out 
on the board. Once it's through, bend some of the legs slightly so it doesn't fold back and solder the legs to the board. Then use some snips to cut off the excess length. The last thing that needs to be done hardware wise is setting the voltage converter to the correct voltage. The voltage converter needs to be set to exactly 5 volts. And that's it, you're done. Now you have your own Quin LD quad module and the next step is programming it. All tutorials you need, for instance, for connecting it with Home Assistant can be found on quinled.info. And a little tip to be mindful, don't connect your USB cable while also connecting a power supply to the main input. Although this should work without a problem, it's not really recommended. So, Again, all board files and component links can be found on quinled.info. And if you have any questions or need more information, you can check out quinled.info or join our Discord channel where there's lots of people who can help you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.